Um, the next question we have is, is just uh, looking at your bios. Each of you, you write, but you're not just playwrights, uh, and or you're not exclusively playwrights. Um, so, how does writing a libretto or a TV script differ from writing for the stage? Um, I'm always <laughs> first. Stories are loud. I'm Story always first. I'll start right. this time. You start. I'll start. I'll Please. Let's shake it up. Thank you. <laughs> Just joking. Uh, well, yeah, in a way, because we are. Um, uh, I also write librettos, um, and I really enjoy it. I like working with a composer because it takes some of the pressure off of having to write by yourself. It's nice to have somebody to collaborate with. But also, we kind of have our own jobs, so <laughs> it's, it's not a complete, it's not a collective creation, which is really nice. But um, I think I learned a lot about um, uh, writing and the structure of writing and working with a composer and really being clear in what I wanted to do because if I have to relay my thoughts or ideas to a composer, I have to kind of be a little bit clear about where I want to go for myself. and. Um, uh, up until that point, I would just start writing. And now I've more and more, I've started to work with an outline, which I thought I was never a kind of person that would ever work with an outline. I thought, no, I just write and it comes out, which is fine. But um, in working with um, a composer, I found a new way of writing that actually, I was like, oh, I, I never thought I could write like this. I never thought that this was a way into the work. And it is, so that to me is exciting, of really kind of, um, and also not, saying more with less, because there's music in opera. And so um, how much can I say with as few words as possible and let the music tell the story too? So the idea of working with this music to tell a story is an exciting thing for me. So I really like working in opera. I, uh, I, I also like the having friends, the yeah. friend having friends aspects of working with other writers. And on, on Saving Hope, we work, I have a partner who is my co showrunner, head writer, who's, whose name is Adam Peddle. He's also a playwright, uh, was also a playwright, is still technically <laughs> a playwright. And we have also, we have a staff of like, we work with a staff of like eight, ten writers. And it's, a, it's a, such a different thing. And the thing that's been the most uh, refreshing for me is that I feel like the process of working with other people in that way to where the show is the thing is that you, you, the bad ego of writing has gradually gone away because there's no time for it. And I used to spend a lot of time feeling like I'm the best or I'm the worst. You know, you get a review and you're like, that review says you're great. And then that review says, you know, you're, you're really like so terrible. Like I got a review of The Pessimist once that said, in the Globe and Mail that said, this play makes me pessimistic about theater. And I like just lay down. I was just like, I'm just lying down. I didn't even go anywhere. I just lay down. And I feel like weirdly uh, that I've, that's eroded for me and having to work with other people. And it's, I found it very, very freeing. Like the idea of like the blank page and the judging and the getting in the way of actually writing is disappearing gradually. And I, I, I like that a lot. Um, yeah, I've written libretto. Uh, I, I really like, I mean, it's sort of audacious because I'm absolutely tone deaf. And uh, if I were working with a composer who gave me music, I couldn't write lyrics to the music, but I can use language musically. So uh, if a, the composer is willing to let me go first, then a libretto will, will happen. Um, one of the things that I used to do as a playwright was uh, about a, a certain way into the play, I'm going, why am I writing a play? Why don't I write this as a film? And then I could make some money. So I thought, yeah, let's do this as a film now. So then I start writing it as a film, and the, the locations would open up, everything would open up. And then I go, no, I, I want to write a play. So, but, so I would go back to it as a play, but the, the process of spending time thinking of it as a film absolutely opened up the play script. Um, and that was really valuable, because for, for whatever reason, there's a tendency to think you can only have so many locations or so many of this, or it's got to be in a room with a bookcase, and, and that's it. Um, so th that event sort of really opened up um, the writing process for me. I, felt, I? Sorry, I was just no, going to no. say, I felt writing, I wrote 
lyrics as well, and I'm also tone deaf. And, but I felt, and I would have gallingly like, I'd be like, no, I think it should be like this. And the composers would be like, you don't know what anything is. But I, I found after writing musicals, it changed the way I wrote plays in that the idea of like the bookcase and the things that you need to go with a play, I stopped writing stage directions completely. I just didn't care anymore about all of that, like whether someone was carrying a purse. I just stopped caring. And it was a fascinating uh, revelation because music is, is a tr such, I just stopped feeling like you needed any other transformative things, you know, except for like the, the, the fabric of, of, the, of the language or the music or the thing itself. It, it was such as, because it is so engrossing and ephemeral, it made me, it made me hate, it made me stop caring about the set. Yeah, and, and also, once you stop, I believe, caring about the set, you begin to engage your best ally, which is the audience's imagination. Uh, I, did a, I did a play in New York set on a tropical island that had 60 scenes in it, all different locations. Um, so clearly, in a small New York theater with no money, we weren't going to build 60 sets. We, we recreated all the locations with light and, and maybe a prop or two. And they communicated. And the, and the audience's imagination. So, I mean, I do like to see beautiful bookshelves, but I don't need to see them in order to in, have a, a rich theatrical experience. And where did Adam go to school? The National Theater School. There's Sheldon a... has a vast, vast <laughs> number of, those of you who are studying with him, uh, an unusually high rate of writers who actually become writers. And, uh, and, uh, and I don't know what magical thing it is, but a really high, unusual number of, of uh, writers from the National Theater School are working. <laughs> I don't know. It's crazy, though, because you did, you chose like crazy people. And I sometimes feel, I don't know if you feel like this, but that, that theater used to self-select for crazy people. And now it's self-selecting for like some normal people. And sometimes like the out, crazy outlier can turn into a normal person through working. And like, and it, that's what it is. Like I think, and I think now like, I wish, I wish that the crazy person would be allowed to work long enough to become normal. In theater. In yeah, theater, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like in yeah. a weird way? Yeah, not, not sort of uh, get to a point where they're like, I can't, like they can't do it anymore. They don't get enough opportunity, like stuff like that. Do you mean like? I they, guess, they're not they're not supported enough so that they can become normal. I just wish like with, with I'm not making a good point. This is being recorded. It is. That's okay. um, but we'll take I, that part out. but it is no you can put it in. But I I guess it's the idea of like of of selection of like because writing is such a strange uh, perverse engagement with the world and it takes so long to get good at it and you need life experience and you need to keep doing it for a really really long time and. You, sometimes people, like, I felt, Sheldon, that you were very supportive of people who not, were not necessarily, like, easy to teach or easy to, like, who, who learned easily. And, but, but with an understanding that it would be worth it to just give them a chance to keep going, you know? I would agree. Like, I, I would say, like, when I was in school, I would get, like, zero out of ten on spelling. I would, like, not take any English class that had to do with reading books. I would. I took. <laughs> I took something called transactional and journalistic English. <laughs> I kind of went. Is that like yes, I would like that loaf of bread. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I don't know. It's in, it was in Winnipeg. It was sweet. Well, that, those were. Well, that explains. <laughs> there was like transactional English, journalistic English, and then like literature. <laughs> and I went transactional, but uh, but it was interesting because I I had no support. It was like. You, you can't spell, you can't write. I don't understand what you're doing when you put stuff on paper. Like, I don't get what you're writing. Like, my writing was confusing and it was like layered. It was like, it made no sense. And I would write these stories. Even in, I remember in elementary school, the teachers would be like, I don't know what's happening in this story. And I thought it was like, I was like, this is good. Yeah. It was not. But the, the thing was though, I remember coming to Ryerson and Sheldon was just like, so supportive. Like if you were willing to work, he was willing to support you. And I never had that experience as a writer. I never had the experience of if I'm willing to work, someone's willing to support me. It was always, you have to be good and then I'm gonna support you. You have to be amazing or whatever that means to 
talented, whatever that means, and then I'll support you. As opposed to like like a crazy person who's <laughs> writing this weird story about a dog and like it just it makes no sense. But they're like, no, oh, she seems into it. I'm gonna support her <laughs> because she's passionate about this weird story. But there's something there, and that's what is so awesome is that there's support for the person who's passionate. Because ultimately, I think that's the people who continue doing this work. The people who are passionate, I don't think it has anything to do with, you know, talent. It has to do with, like, are you willing to work? Are you willing to, like, write that story again and again and spend two years writing a play? Like, the, you, like who knows if anybody will see it or it'll ever, ever work, but you're so committed to it. Like, that's crazy. That's crazy. It's very crazy. But there, oh, it is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but there, there, I mean, there was talent there. I, I, I mean, I, it was clear to me that there was talent. So, I mean, that was. Well, it was like under a lot of crazy. Mm, yeah. It's craziness. <laughs> to see the talent through the craziness, I think, yeah. is a bit of a, maybe a, it's a, well, it's a well, what skill. helped me do that was an experience I would never forget. As a kid, um, I remember writing my first, well, my, my fantasy as a kid was to be um, a baseball player, but at 10 years old, I made up a, a pen name for myself, Morgan Thompson, very waspish, <laughs> and, and I had no idea what writing was. I, um, but in, in high school, I wrote my, uh, a short story, and this girl really liked it, which is basically why one does that. And um, she said, it's like J.D. Salinger, and I said, oh, oh, oh. So then I... <laughs> So then I showed it to my favorite English teacher, <clears throat> and he read it, and he said, well, it's a good thing you don't take writing seriously. And I thought, holy shit, that is the worst thing that anyone could say to anybody. If I were to ever teach, not that, I mean, that would be third on the list behind baseball and, and pen name, I would never do that to anybody. And I don't know w what his issue was, but, I never f forgot that. Um, you, don't, you just don't do it to people. Also, I mean, um, you can be wrong. And the, the, to, to have the arrogance to say, no, no, you can't write, or you'll never be a writer. I mean, the arrogance of that. And the only way you'll be right is because you've forced that person out of, out of the out of the arena. And to me, that's, that's, uh, it should be against the law. I mean, that's an awful thing to do to someone.